Welcome back to part two of the Hendy headstock repair. Um, on this part, I was able to TIG weld in the buggered up uh, pin wrench hole and recut it. I tried to do that with the second one and the third one, and then realized that I was out of gas for the TIG welder. So I got a piece of 15.5 pre hardened steel and started to make a couple of the new. Uh, locking collars for the bearings. First I went in with the uh, rotor brooch or the, or the uh, annular drill which gives you a nice little plug to open it up enough that I could then go in with the boring bar. Here I'm taking a uh, 200 thousandths total diameter removal with the boring bar short in the holder. It worked really well. This is the stop for the cross feed. For uh, threading it's handy to put, set that stop and then you can just take the cross slide back to the same position. Here I'm setting a dial indicator on the back of the tool post. I saw Keith Fenner do this years ago and it's really nice to know how far and you're actually feeding when you're threading. So to thread I just go ahead and engage the lead screw lever there to the right of the apron. I've got the automatic stop set so after it's threaded into the shoulder because I'm threading into a shoulder if you look down in the bottom center of the screen, you see that handle coming up. That's the lead screw engagement handle, and it comes up, and at about this point, the uh, it disengages. So feed the cross slide in, put the lead screw into reverse, and it backs the uh, carriage out. And then you can, while it's coming back out, I usually dial in the the depth of the next cut. As soon as the tool clears, you can back the uh, cross slide back to the stop and then uh, put a little oil on. For some reason I decided to clear chips at this point but and then re-engage the lead screw in the forward position and you can make your next pass. Makes the threading really easy. After threading it I went ahead and turned the collar down to the right OD and, uh, and since I've got, I cut that piece a little short I'm trying to get two of these collars out of it. Made it a little trickier than it needed to be but I was able to get it out here. I'm test fitting the spindle. I wanted to do this before I, uh, well, I had the spindle out of the headstock. Here I'm setting the parting tool uh, parallel to the face of the chuck, just using a one, two, three block. I, I saw somebody do that, I, I think, at some point. I don't remember where, but uh, it's a nice way to get that tool set parallel to the face of the chuck. Um, so here's the part. It's a 15.5 pH uh, stainless steel. It turns really nicely. It gives you nice parts. You know, for a stainless, you end up with a really nice surface finish. Here's a Adam Booth A bomb 79 trick I learned for getting that burr off of a parted part by using the vise. Um, but by doing that, I kind of messed up that first thread, so it was hard to thread that get that collar to thread on. So I flipped it around and threaded it on the other way and was able to, it, I think that last thread just got turned over a little bit. And here's the shaft that carries the gear that drives, that is can be reversed back and forth. There was a little bit of galling, so I just kind of went in there with the tool and just cleaned up the little ridge and burr. And here you can see some more galling in the headstock casting. Um, I think there's just lack of lubrication at some point. Uh, for this, for the casting itself, I took a uh, brake cylinder honing hone and uh, ran it in and out with the drill just to knock down those edges. Now, if you ever find yourself putting together one of these hendies, this is the proper order. Uh, it took me several tries to get this the order right. So the first, this is the first gear that goes in because it's too long to go in once the other one, this opposite gears in. And then after that, then you place the that third bevel gear on with the shaft somewhat extended, and then you can press that. It's a real light fit on that shaft, but it does take a little bit of help. I had to tap the last little bit. I had to just tap the clamp or the hammer to get it to seat. And there you've got the uh, three bevel gears that make up the famous Hendy reversing lead screw. And there's the single tooth dog clutch that runs the whole reversing setup. 
So there you can see that there's a fork that goes in where my fingers are and it's a slide that's hooked, attached to the apron that slides that uh, shifting fork back and forth. Just using some all threaded rod to pull that um, gear on and then the outer gear is bolted on. So with it back together I got to play with it a little bit and see how the system works. I've never had my other lathe apart so I wasn't quite sure how it worked but as that little dog clutch slides back and forth it catches uh, there's a dog tooth on each of those bevel gears on either end and by doing that it reverses the feed of that outboard gear which is what drives the uh, lead screw and so that that simple mechanism is what allows the reversing of the lead screw that the Hendy uses. As you can see there, I didn't get it in all the way. I hit the dog instead of going in, and so then it's just in neutral, which is uh, where you have the lathe a lot of the time if you're doing facing operations and operations that don't require the power feed. But uh, this is just kind of a demonstration of how this mechanism works. It was kind of fun to get to play with it there. It's in neutral, so th this in this case the lead screw wouldn't be turning. With that, I finally put the bolt on so that shaft had quit sliding out. There's a that big washer acts like a thrust washer to have the thrust that comes from those gears. With all that I was done, I was ready to start putting the headstock back together. So the cone pulley goes on first. I finally pulled up the patent drawing off of uh, Keith Rucker's Vintage Machinery website. If you've got old machinery, you should be going to that site a lot. Of course, then I realized I had to put the that outboard bearing in, so to just kind of slide things out of the way to get that in. And then the spindle goes in. There's a ring, little oilers, as in my earlier video I showed the little oilers that are in those, in both inboard and outboard bearings. And then there's a locking collar and a washer that I'm trying to get in place there. And I just kind of tap the headstock, or the spindle in, until I can feel those threads start to engage in that collar, and then I can Use that to suck the uh, the spindle in the rest of the way into that outboard or in actually be the inboard bearing, and I just kept tapping and then tr turning it until I could feel the thread start to engage, and then I just put a pin in the hole for the pin spanner to kind of tighten it up. So with it back together, I kind of checking the fit and then realized that uh, I forgot to put the brass cap that returns the oil from the bearing that the is slung around there runs out into that brass cap and that feeds it back into the bottom. This is the eccentric shaft that the back gears ride on. Just making sure that is on there. It's a really a good fit considering that the lathe is over a hundred years old. So this shaft goes through and you can see on that outboard end in my hand that it's on an eccentric and then the, this handle has the same eccentric to it and is keyed to the, there's a key engaging it to the shaft so I'm going to drive it onto the shaft and now we've got the uh, back gears engage and disengage. And then we have to disconnect the pin that locks that bull gear in to be able to run in back gears. And there's the low speed back gears. Then I had to pull that outboard that gear off to get the cover back on, which was premature. I ended up having to take the cover off so I could finish getting things together. And here's the pin that there was the pin that engaged to lock the bull gear to the cone pulley. When you're out of back gears, and there's the headstock in back gears. That gear can be pushed in to disengage the drivetrain if you're just doing an operation where you don't need the drivetrain running. You slide that gear in, and it disengages the drivetrain from the spindle. Uh, it makes it run. It's kind of nice to run it like that if you're not don't need it because it's a lot quieter. Here, I just reached my hand down under the casting and uh, turned the slid that single tooth dog clutch to the other position. So now it's rotating the opposite direction from the gear that's being driven by the lead screw. So 
Here's just kind of a walk around of the finished headstock. They've got pretty, most of it done. The guards are painted, but I st I've got one piece that was missing. I still need to make a new one to complete the guards. But for the most part, there's the headstock put together and uh, ready to go. That was one of the bigger pieces to this uh, project, so I'm glad to get that done and move on to the quick change gearbox for the next part. Here's a couple photos of what I started with at the beginning uh, when I picked the lathe up. And uh, here's the finished product. Glad you stopped by. Thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video.